Welcome to Beggar's Bettering. And our first guest, representing the Judgment Day, the NXT North American Champion. Oh, oh, I think he's got to grab something. Oh! <laughs> NXT North American Champion, Dominic Mysterio. What's up, fam? Oh, so excited! Derek, what's up, man? How you doing? Great. We're wrapping the... Love it. Love it. Yeah, I need to hook you guys up with some Judgment Day shirts. We got too much too much Ray on there. <laughs> well, that's what we have. Derek does have Just Dominic on his shirt, though. I like that. I like the Just Dominic one. boy. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Oh, we're fantastic. We are so excited. I think it's a really fitting full circle moment that you are our first official Baker's Bantering podcast guest. Oh, I'm, I'm honestly honored to be able to be here on the podcast with you guys. It, it, I'm, I feel like we've been talking about it for a little while now, and I'm glad we can make it happen. Well, I do have few questions about you and, and relationship <laughs> to, to the Judgment Day. Plus, imagine you did did have with Wesley. I'm gonna talk about that as well. Yeah, I'm dude. I'm here for you. Whatever you need, I got. You. Yes, but before we get into that, we are gonna start by talking about just like our relationship and how our friendship came about. <laughs> so it's funny, Dominic, because actually this morning I was on TikTok and randomly somebody had tagged us in a, a video. And to be honest, I don't go and look at that many of our tagged videos, but I do try to go look at our tagged videos after we've been to a big event because a lot of times there will be people who we got to meet and who are excited to you know, say that they met Derek and that sort of thing. So I'll go and I'll check after big events so that we can say thank you to those people and that kind of stuff. And today this person had posted like eight hours ago when I saw it, it was the entire clip of you surprising Derek on the bump from back in 2020. Wow. So I literally just this morning got to rewatch that little segment that we had recorded with the bump th almost three years ago at this point. That's oh, so yeah. crazy. It it doesn't feel like three years. I, I did saw that on TikTok. Oh, you saw it last on TikTok night. too? You saw it last night? Last night. I was in bed and I saw it on myself on TikTok. Oh my freaking God. I'm on TikTok. <laughs> You're so silly. You're on TikTok every day. But what I thought was really What's cool. Dominic? I know what I wanted to ask you about, though, Dom, was like, we know what happened from our perspective. And mom, I wanted you to kind of explain to Dom, like what happened with that whole first video and Derek with his finding out about 1997. But then I want to hear from you, Dom, about what happened from your perspective. And I know we originally connected with Aaliyah and she was the one that showed you the video. So why don't you explain what that first video was and then we can let Dom tell us his side of things yeah so so Derek actually has to work out Dom to watch WWE because Love he it. he doesn't like to move all that much and so he pays me in calories to sit on the couch <laughs> and watch you and your buddies do what you do and so he happened to be on the bike that day and I was working and we were all still at home and and I was working at the desk and he just starts losing his mind and he's screaming, mom, 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 you know, from the other room. So I run in there. And of course, at that time, we were already doing Baker Banner. And so I had the video on and and he told me that you two were brothers and you were brothers only because you were both born in 1997 at that moment. Little did we know, I think your birthday's the 5th, right? Yeah, April 5th. Yeah, so he's the eighth. So you were literally born three days apart. That's and, so crazy. Yeah, and I was like, oh, my God, you're twins, right? <laughs> like, you're both born in 1997. And I thought my mom was Angie. Oh, you, yeah. Uh, he thought his mom was Angie, he said. <laughs> so anyway, that's how what started the whole thing. And then it got posted, and Aaliyah saw it. Bless her soul. Well, Derek knew, because he was already a big fan of you guys at that point, And he knew that Dominic wasn't on TikTok yet, which, fun fact... Dominic joined TikTok this week. Did you know that? I do. Well, <laughs> I followed him from Baker Banter because I saw his post with Rhea. But 
he had no way or he knew that you weren't on TikTok, but he knew Aaliyah was. So he was very adamant, like, we have to tag Aaliyah. So once we posted that video, you saw it. And, and what happened from your side of the story? So it's actually super funny because we were at, uh, I believe at the time it might have been a Raw or SmackDown during the pandemic and we were filming and Aaliyah comes up to me and she goes, hey, she goes, have you seen this video of Derek Baker on TikTok? And I was like, no, I was like, I don't have TikTok. I was like, I just have Instagram and Twitter. And she goes, dude, she goes, you got to see it because he loses his mind over you. And I was like, over me? And she was like, yeah, you got to check it out. So I ended up seeing the video and she's like, do you mind like responding to him? And I was like, not at all. I was like, just I was like, I don't do TikTok. So I was like, just tell me what to do. So we ended up recording that video for him. And then I didn't think anything of it. I was kind of just hoping that you guys would see it. And I believe that next week, uh, WWE social team and like our uh, talent relations team came up to me and they were like, hey, uh, we're I think we're gonna get Derek on the bump would you be okay like showing up and surprising him and I was like not at all I was like I'm so glad we were able to make this happen I was like he seemed so excited and for me I was still brand new so seeing someone getting excited for me was definitely special for me so it was like it was really cool and I wanted to be able to do whatever I could to to make make Derek happy at that point you're so sweet well we that was the first, I think, big surprise that we got to pull off with WWE. And so, Derek, what did you think back when we – well, first, they, him and Aaliyah did respond to the video. And then also, a couple months later, they Dominic surprised you on the bump. So what was that like for you? Mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> Mind blown. And um, my, my question for you, Dom – I can be a full kid of breakfast for, for this one. How does it feel um, teaming up with, with your father, Ray Mysterio, and the capture the, the, the biggest titles? That was the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, WrestleMania Backlash a couple, couple years ago. How does it feel to become the SmackDown Tag Team Champions with one and only Ray Mysterio? You know, at the time, it was really cool because it was my first title, uh, a tag title with my dad. We were the first ever father-son tag team champions in WWE history. I don't so I, I don't think that has ever been done before. And the fact that we were the first two to do it and capture those tag titles, um, especially the way we did it during the pandemic and in just so short on my debut, I believe I was maybe a year, a year and a half in. And I had already won my first title alongside my dad. It was uh, it was honestly pretty crazy and pretty surreal moment. But unfortunately, my NXT North American title championship that I won a couple weeks ago is a little bit better. Oh, wow. Well, I was super excited about that personally. <laughs> yes, the house was split. Derek is not very happy about it. But we are going to talk about NXT at the end. But... Um, the rest of us were pretty excited about it. But one thing that I think is really cool about our relationship with you is the fact that you started your career at the same time that we were very early on in our social media career. So when we did get to connect with you, it was super early on in your career. And now fast forward, I feel like we've both like we've blossomed and your career has just blossomed in such a cool way. And I just think like that, I think it's really special for all of us, your family and our family that we've been able to kind of grow together in your career. But before we jump into you joining the Judgment Day and 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 turning on the dark, uh, going to the dark side, I want to talk about the first time we actually met in person. So we found out that Royal Rumble was going to be in St. Louis. It was in St. Louis in January of 2022. We found out, I think, in September or October of the year before, and immediately I knew like we were going to have to figure out a way to do something special and. To this day, people ask us about you and your dad and, and your family and just, you know, what are you guys really like? And I always tell them that the first time we ever met you, we didn't know what to expect. We knew we were going to see you. We knew we were going to get to say hello and chat a little bit. 
but you guys spent two hours hanging out with our family that first night that we met you. And I, that is like the first thing that I tell people now. I'm like, no, they are the realest of the real. And they legitimately took the time to get to know us. And I just think that's really special. And so what, what, what did you know leading up to that? And, and did you guys intend to spend that long with us? Like, what were you expecting? Um, honestly, we didn't, we were just expecting to meet the the Baker fam, you know, and uh, go surprise Derek. We, I don't think we were given a specific time limit. And it's funny because usually when we do things like that, it's unless it's like a meet and greet that like was scheduled, we're not there. Even those are like meet and greets usually last about an hour and a half, two hours. So that's even like pushing it for us. So like usually when we just go and like surprise someone, it's 15, 20 minutes, like tops max 30 minutes at the most and then at some point someone starts nagging us that we got to leave um but i feel like with you guys we kind of just all hit it off so well and we all ended up just getting along and you know vibing off each other and like having such a good time there enjoying each other's company that like time kind of just flew by you know we were all kind of just talking and having fun and we were at a bakery so what's not to love about it and like we were, like I said, we were all just kind of having fun and hanging out and it got to the point where we didn't realize what time it was or even realize that we had a Royal Rumble the next day because we were <laughs> just out there having fun with you guys. Dom, do they say your name like Mysterio like they do for your dad? So I think it varies on the announcer, right? Everyone has like their own little twist to it. I know Samantha Irvin is very particular with how she like says everyone's names right because she's so good at what she does she tries to like give everyone their own special and unique twist to their name so like I'm sure with my dad she does the misterio but with me I think she changes it up a little bit because she has to add the dirty dom and she has to add the because my dad's not a champion so they have to add the NXT North American championship to me so it's like she has to add her own little twist to it so it's just it it varies on the on the announcer. That that's fair. Well, I just wanted to ha- hop to it. What is your relationship to the Judgment Day? How you make you feel to be part of that group? How's my relationship with the Judgment Day? Man, our relationship's great right now. Even though we're having a little, you know, family discussions on TV. We just have to realize that Finn and Damien, they're fighting for the biggest thing in the WWE, which is the World Heavyweight Championship. Both of them want it. Both of them deserve it. And I think that's it's just it's gotten to the point where the prize is too big for the both of them and we can't let that tear our family apart. So I think we're handling the situation internally. I know Rhea's Rhea's getting the boys under control. Uh and I'm I'm still taking care of things down in NXT as you know. But Judgment Day, we're I think we're good, man. We're we're on the new cover of, of Payback that's coming in Pittsburgh September second. So I think the Judgment Day's doing pretty good. We're stronger than ever, I think. Well that that's good. And speaking of, of Rhea, we did have Dirty Dom. Dominic Mysterio versus Wesley for the NXT North American Champion. But there's a little, little bit of involvement for that. That is Damian Priest, Finn Balor, plus the WWE Women's World Champion, Rhea Ripley. There's cheated to help you win the match. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know if I consider it cheating because at the end of the day, I was the one who got on top of Wesley and hit him with the one, two, three. But, you know, the, if people can see it two different ways, Derek, I understand that you may think it's cheating, but you got to remember, in 2005, Eddie Guerrero, he would lie, he would cheat, and he would steal. And unfortunately, I I had to use a little bit of that to get this bad boy. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Derek, but when... Next next time I see you, I promise you we can you can you can hold the title and you can do whatever you want with it. Honestly, I really want to we really want to fight you for that title. <laughs> you want a shot at the 
NXT North American title? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, let's do it on, on NXT, bruh. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm going to have to talk to Sean about this, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, you'll have to let us know. Ooh. I want to, so I do want to ask you from that first time that we did meet back in 2022, one of the things that I thought was so cool was that, I mean, from our perspective, we know Derek is a huge wrestling fan. But we de- we didn't necessarily know how well versed he was at the statistics side of things and just knowing exactly what happened when and all that kind of stuff because we don't have anybody to confirm that he's a hundred percent correct all the time. But one of the things that we noticed with you guys was that he was spitting out these facts and you and your dad were so impressed because you told us like, that's exactly right. And I remember the one that really stood out to me t- the most that you guys were so impressed by Derek and his knowledge of, of the wrestling world was at the time Ray did hold the longest Royal Rumble men's in the ring um, timeline, which what was the time? 62 to 12 seconds. 62 minutes and 12 seconds. And I remember you and your dad were so impressed by that. And then the next day we went to Royal Rumble. That Royal Rumble was my first WWE event ever. And at some point during the match, they did put up a a, a stat that said, you know, Rey Mysterio holds the longest time in the ring, 62 minutes and 12 seconds. And I didn't intentionally do this, but I hit Derek so hard because I was like, oh, my gosh. That's what you said. That's exactly what you said. But I just wanted to get your perspective. Like, what did you think after meeting Derek that first time and just like really getting to see how much of a wealth of knowledge he is when it comes to wrestling? Like, what did that, how did that make you feel? It's, it's honestly so cool to see because we're moving so fast. I mean, I can't, I can't speak for my dad, but I know now being in it and just, you know, being thrown in the deep end, I know how fast things are just constantly moving from one city to the next. I honestly can't tell you where I was on Monday. Um, so it's like, it's just so crazy. And the fact that like, that's that's one of the most important moments in my dad's career where he won the War of Rumble and he ended up taking that to WrestleMania and winning the world title. And it's like, if you ask me, I would have been like, yeah, I was in the Royal Rumble for 62 minutes and 12 seconds in 2006 because I won it but like my like now thinking about it it's like it's impossible there's no way I could remember that I would want to and work super hard but like everything's just going so fast I'm like there's no way so my I thought my dad would definitely know and when Derek is just coming out here yeah 62 minutes and 12 seconds me and my dad were like what (laughs) is that my dad was like I know I spent over an hour in there and I was I I remember I actually remember specifically grabbing my phone and googling it and I was like, yeah, I was like, he's 100% correct. And like right then and there, he just started, keep, he kept going with facts about when he won. And even though he lost to Booker T and then when Chavo Guerrero came out and we were like, yeah, this, Derek's a walking Mysterio encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool that real WWE wrestlers were so impressed by you. I know. And speaking of the Royal Rumble, this year's Rumble, you lasted to the end. How many seconds you were in that room during the Royal Rumble of this year? Oh, man. I don't know. I think I did over 20-something minutes, I think, because I came out at, I believe, 18 and didn't... I got eliminated by Cody at number 30. So that's why I always have a bone to pick with Cody, because he was the... He came in there guns blazing and took me out of the Royal Rumble. But... It was honestly pretty cool to be in there because the Royal Rumble before that, I was in there for maybe three minutes. And then in the 2020 Royal Rumble, when I, uh, or 2021 Royal Rumble, I was in there for maybe four minutes. So being in there this year for 20 plus minutes was definitely a, a super fun experience. Uh, even though, she- if you go back and watch it, Seamus sits on me in the corner for a solid 45 seconds where I can't breathe. <laughs> but. Yeah, it was a it was a great time. Okay, so of all of the different kinds of matches you get to compete in, I just feel like the Royal Rumble's got to be one of your top matches. Like it's just so chaotic. I feel like it's so fun for you guys. It's extremely fun, but believe it or not, it's the most tiring. Like 
it's so, it's so tiring. Like I had, uh, what's today? Thursday on Tuesday, I had a match against Dragon Lee. And then on Monday, I had a tag match. And I was tired. But four to five minutes in the Royal Rumble is so exhausting because you constantly have to be punching someone or kicking someone and lifting them, trying to get them over the top. And if they're trying to get you over the top, you're trying to hold on. So like just the constant movement of everything and like being caught up on the ropes hurts and you you have bruises all over your arms and chest and everything. So it's just, it's definitely a, a painful one, but man, I can only imagine the feeling once you win that thing. Cause it's, it's a, uh, it's definitely surreal and a lot of fun. So I have a question. How far in advance do you know your number? I mean, I know you pre- you know you're going to be a part of the Rumble, but when do you find out your number two or your number eighteen or your number thirty? Uh, you don't really find out until like before you come. Like, I want to say maybe a couple hours before, like maybe three or four hours, because the numbers can change, the order can change, everything is honestly still up in the air. Um, but I think. As soon as like a certain time hits for the Royal Rumble, everyone that's in it gets put in a room and we get told our numbers in our order. But again, that could all change as well. Wow. Yeah, I think one of the things that it just by knowing you and being able to converse with you and we're coming to these different events and stuff. And and if you can't answer this, that's OK. But one of the things that I've noticed is like there was the time when you were in Kansas city for Monday night raw, you had texted me that that day you had to go out and do some shopping because you needed to wear something different than what you originally thought you were supposed to wear. And like this week you, we were supposed to do this at one time. By the time this interview comes out, they will all the WWE audience will already know that you were on SmackDown tomorrow night. So like your schedule got changed super last minute. So what's that like? Just kind of like it's your job, but you really don't know a whole lot. Yeah, it's honestly, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. I don't think people understand how, like, improv and like, in the moment and like, chaotic things really are. But like, I don't know what it is. I thrive in it. I thrive in the chaos. I thrive in just like, the pressure of it. Um, I don't know, there's been a couple times even before I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Um, before we went out to Mexico, I was supposed to be flying out a couple of days early to do some media. And I'm literally boarding my plane going to Mexico and I get a call and I'm like, hey, I'm like, hello. They're like, hey, uh, you're needed for SmackDown. Please don't board the plane. And I was like, uh, I was like, OK, um, so I shouldn't do this media. And they're like, nope, you're needed for SmackDown. I was like, OK, got off the plane. Ended up staying that next day because I had to go to SmackDown on Friday. So like everything is just so crazy and chaotic that like you really don't you really don't know this. It's this business constantly surprises you. And it's 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 honestly amazing. I love it. I'm sure it's exhausting as well, but it probably adds to the, you know, to the wrestling community's love. I mean, you guys are even in the dark of what's about you know, going to happen next. So if yeah. you're in the dark, you know, those of us who, who follow, you know, no wonder there's always so the many dark. surprises. Yeah, like I, we really like, we really have no idea what's, what's going on sometimes. And it's like, we, we, they keep it a secret. Cause I think they try to not tell as many people because I see it online and I'm sure you guys see it online, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, like all these news reports and stuff. And I'm like, how, I was like, how does this happen? I don't even know what's going on. How do you guys know what's going on? Yeah. So I'm sure they, they try and keep everything under tight wraps until it's like time. But yeah, it's honestly such a such a crazy world of of the WWE. But I've been in it for so long now that it's I love it. I wouldn't change it for anything. Awesome. Speaking of the mania, the kids have um the mommy shirt and your we actually to that kid trying to push it away because she he was mommy re Ripley. How does it feel when that kid don't don't want you near? You know, he came in pretty strong and started pushing me and I was like I was like this this little kid doesn't understand that I'm five feet taller than him. <laughs> I and saw not only, that. not only not only that, but mommy's there. And she's stronger than I am. 
<laughs> so I can't even ima- I can't even imagine what she would do to him. If I pick him up with two hands, she's picking him up with one. But honestly, it's it's so fun to see how like angry kids get at me. And it's like he did he did not want me in that picture at all. He was he was pushing me real hard and I you can if you watch closely to the video, I'm trying very hard to you can see like the ends of my toes just like slowly coming up cuz I'm like slowly starting to fall back. And I'm I'm trying to hold as strong as possible so I don't look super weak with this kid pushing me all over the place. But but it's it's really fun to see because his dad was his dad was all for it too. He was like, Yeah, push him, push him. I'm like, why are you encouraging this? I was like, this is why I'm against dads. Oh no. Well, I think that's funny because you did tell us You gotta because- deserve it though. Well, if he was messing with him, I think he probably did deserve it a little. No, yeah, he, I, he deserved it. You know, I, I get that a lot. That's okay. But I, I think it's funny. You, I just have to give you the shout out that you have done. You've just been such a good friend to us and to Derek. And the past couple of years, you have called Derek on his birthday. And this past year, when we got to say hello to you and FaceTime for Derek's, on Derek's birthday, you told us that the night before we had been watching SmackDown and Katie and I were in awe of how much they were booing you and you could not even get a word in and you actually had the microphone in your hand and you still couldn't get a word in because there were so many people booing you and you told us on the FaceTime that boos were your cheers so I wanted to talk about that like how does that motivate you oh man it's it's honestly it it gives me goosebumps kind of talking about it because it's it's so crazy right like for us in this business noise is a good thing right when you hear something it's good when you don't hear anything that's when it's bad um so i remember leading into wrestlemania i had all these promos uh where i was in ring talking uh i was able to talk to charlotte for like five minutes face to face i would say things to my dad and then after wrestlemania it kind of just picked up to where like you said i would hold the mic up and start talking and people would just absolutely boo me they did just they did not want to hear a word I had to say. And it's so crazy that it's still happening. Uh, last Monday, we went out and I cut off Cody and Seth. Damien was able to speak. Rhea was able to speak. And when I lifted the microphone to say something, they all drowned me in booze. I don't know what it is. I, you know, I just want to speak my piece. I, you know, I just, I just want to say a little something but it's it's honestly such a blessing to be able to just get that reaction from fans and and know that I'm doing something right. So it's it's really it's a it's so cool to be able to just have these opportunities and it's such a blessing and I'm so fortunate to to just be able to be a part of all of it. Well, if you want to be on the good side, which is a way to Talk to sense to you about a little bit. You want Ray to talk some sense into him? Is that what you said? No, I think he said Ray wants Derek to talk sense into Dom. Oh, Ray did tell you before Survivor so Series is, last year this to is talk some sense into him. This is how to do that. Okay, let's see it. You tell him. Dominic, I understand you have a good re- relationship with Mr. Josh Day, and that's cool. That's really cool right now, but they are using you. They are nibbling you. They are trying to get, trying to get, anything you you want it. It's a reason you have the that title NXT No Remake Championship, which is going in it right now, but because of Rhea. Do you think? Do you think this is a good idea? To do Derek. that. I don't know if you're going to like my answer, dude, but just know that I love you. We're still friends, but I think, I don't think they're using me. I don't think they're manipulating me. They're helping me. Look, this was thanks to mommy Rhea, Finn and Damien. Damien has the money in the bank. Rhea's a world champion. Like the judgment days just were winning. Well, that may be. You guys are winning that task, but I am pretty happy. Damien Priest is making money in the bank. That's good for him. Fatal wasn't a world heavyweight championship. 
Rhea got to focus on one thing, and that's Lana for Kyria. And speaking of her, how do you feel about Lana for Kyria to kick Rhea's head in? What's this name? Who is he saying? Uh, Lyra Valkyria. She's the she's a girl in NXT that you know Rhea was mentoring and helping down there, thinking that she was gonna do some good. Um, but she ended up turning her back on Rhea last night at NXT and kicking her in the head. And Rhea was not was not happy about that because she doesn't go out of her way to go and help new talent especially because you know the judgment days are family anyone that that we try to help is in the judgment day and she went out of her way to try and help lyra and she kind of just threw it back in in ria's face and i think that's what derek was talking about because she kicked her at nxt last night and yeah we were not happy about that but derek let me ask you a question real quick how would you feel if somehow, some way, I managed to convince my dad to join the Judgment Day? Defense. I don't think it's going to happen, but let's theoretically speaking, how would you feel about that? Well, if Bray Mysterio joins that group, be honest, I really want to see that happen sooner. So, has Ray ever been a heel? He's never been a bad guy. Ooh. That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, that could be the case, but like I said before, they are using you, <laughs> intimidate you. The judgment day is not your family. Ooh. You know what I think? The bloodline is. Oh, wow. The no, bloodline is. No. The bloodline is. Demolished. It's gone. No, no, no. the bloodline is. That well, family's in shambles. That's a real family, and they're in real shambles. The yeah. Judgment Day well, is the, a pieced up family that we picked out for each other, and we're all as close as ever. Well, Roman Reigns lost Jay. Well, first lost Sammy. Lost Jay Uso. Lost Jimmy Uso. British Shield, Solo Sokoa will damn will turn on Roman. And and I really want to see you part with Roman Reigns, which I'll be happy with. That, that, that way, I will be fans of him. Not yet, but usually in a judgment day, and I got a feeling Solo Sokoa is going to part of the, the ju- judgment day and take you out. Oh, wow. Oh, well, as long as Priest, Rhea, and Finn are there, I don't think anyone's going to touch me. But He's confident like I in said, the teammates. bloodline's in shambles, dude. They're not even they're they're done. They're a mess. Yeah, well, Judgment Day runs WWE now. Yeah, I like that. But one of the things I do want to tell you and th- this is Mom and Derek can attest that this is accurate, but we have had so many of our friends that we've made through TikTok and people that come on our TikTok live and people we also get to meet in person at these events that have just praised you as one of the absolute best heels of all time but definitely one of the best heels in modern day wrestling so what does that feel like you know you're only 26 years old and people are giving you pretty high praises I mean it's negative but that's a good thing in your world right (laughs) yeah most definitely it's honestly it's such a freaking blessing it's so it's so surreal to me like it's um like everything just happens so fast uh, like this August will be my th- three years since I debuted against Seth. Um, so it's like, I'm not even three years in this business yet. And it's like, I've, I got thrown into the deep end with the sharks and it was sink or swim at that point. And I feel like I just got on a shark and started riding them. Um, cause it's, it's just been such a crazy run that we've had. And like I said, I'm so blessed and I'm so fortunate for all the opportunities that have been given to me. Um, and I just try to, I try to make the most of them every time I can, um, even if it's uh, for as little time as possible or if they give me the whole back end of the show, I, I, I do what I can to make sure the people hate me. 
<laughs> you know I what? think you're doing a really good job at it. You know what I think, Derek? Can I tell you something? What? I think Dom needed to get out of the shadow of his dad. Yeah. And by his joining the Judgment Day, like he's become his own person in WWE. And I think eventually he and Ray are going to be cool again. But in the meantime, I'm going to cheer for you every time, no matter no matter who you're up against. And and I'll tell you, when I the very first Royal Rumble we saw, I was like, I couldn't even watch. I was like, don't hurt Dom like that. So I take it very personally now when you get hit and I got to hide my eyes because I don't like to see it because I know it hurts. It's got to hurt. But But anyway, I think he's he needed to stand on his own two feet and and become his own wrestler, not Ray's son. And I think that's what he's done. Thank you. I appreciate that. That could be true, Mom, but to to be honest, Roman Reigns is a savior. Did He's not the savior. <laughs> you hate Roman Reigns. I don't understand I don't this know. obsession. Yeah, I don't get it. Roman Reigns is, is a savior. He is a he, head head of the table of travel chief. All these things you call yourself. But I think it's a good idea to to, to have Dominic join with Roman. Oh, I can't that? I can't join Roman. I got Jay. Jay's got to join the Judgment Day. Ooh. Oh, I love that. Jay. That'd be fun. Well, speaking of that, I have a little disposal for you, actually. A proposal? A proposal. Proposal. Let's let's hear it. How about you team up with Jay or so tomorrow night on SmackDown, it will be Dominic Mysterio with Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa tomorrow Oof. night on Friday Night SmackDown. Dude, I like I like this. This is a good match. The only problem I have with that is that Jay would have to be in the Judgment Day for me to tag with him. Mm. He's got to change his color from red to purple. Yeah. He can he can keep the all white pants. But maybe the palm tree's <laughs> a little purple and black in there. Yeah. I th- and I think that fit perfectly. He's got tattoos. Jay Uso is not going to join the ju- Judgment Day. Why not? I think he'd be a perfect fit. He's because looking. He's got to find a new family. That's true. Yeah, he can't He can't because be going solo. Because Solo Zakoa is going to join your family. Oh. Solo's going to join the Judgment Day? Yeah, I don't know him. Him and Rhea got some beef from last time because Solo Solo got in my face, and Mommy did not like that. <laughs> well, well, speaking of that, I did saw face to face with Solo Solo and Rhea, and my God, that that's the stare that was for both up was priceless. Priceless. Solo was staring at the tough woman. <laughs> and, and she is a very real. tough woman. Okay, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask you this, but I'm going to ask it anyways, and we can go from there. But I just really would love to know, after you attacked your dad on Thanksgiving Day last year, were you able to spend any of Thanksgiving with your full family? No, I left. <laughs> <laughs> well, you went to prison, right? Yeah. No, that was Christmas. That was Christmas. Oh, that prison was Christmas. So you attacked your dad on Thanksgiving. I just beat him up on Thanksgiving and bounced. And then you went to prison on Christmas. Yes. Christmas, I didn't get to spend any time with any family because I was locked up. But mommy was able to bail me out. But for Thanksgiving, no, it was actually kind of funny. They uh, So after I ended up beating him up, Rhea and I snuck into the kitchen, grabbed some turkey, and then we left. <laughs> Just turkey or a full plate? No, just like we each got like a turkey leg because my like my mom does this this thing where like she's baked like a whole turkey before and like no one really eats it or eats like half of it. So instead, what she does is she gets like like turkey legs like from like Disney World or Disneyland like that style, just giant turkey legs, and she'll cook them. And she's like, "All right, who wants a turkey leg?" And she'll count and she'll just have a bunch of turkey legs to, like ready to go. So what we did is just beat my dad up grabbed a turkey leg and hit the road because we had to go to Raw. (laughs) So I have to tell you, my boyfriend, I think it was, I think we were, I was showing him something, a video of you. And he was like, 
there's no way that hair's real. And I was like, I think it's his real hair. And then we saw you at WrestleMania and you had your, your mullet going on. So I just wanted to know, like, how long has this taken? Are, are you keeping it? Do you like it? What's the plan with that? Um, I absolutely freaking love my mullet. It's kind of... <laughs> It's kind of crazy. Like I see pictures of myself with short hair and like the, we call it like the, the grade school cut. And it's just like, I'm like, what was I doing, man? Like, I guess, cause I went to private school for so long and like, we just had to have like a certain cut that that was just uh, what I was used to. And then I don't remember who, I think I told my dad, I was like, Hey, I was like, this was when we were still getting along. I was like, Hey, are you okay with, I was like, is it, do you think it'd be cool if I started growing a mullet like Eddie's? And he's like, yeah, he was, I think it'd be cool. He's like, just, I don't remember if he told me to ask someone or he was like, just do it. So I just started growing it out and cutting it from the top. And people would ask me like, are you growing a mullet? And I'm like, I'm trying. And I think at WrestleMania last year when I wrestled Logan and, and the Miz for the first time I, I went like this, I shook my head and I felt it move from the back. So it's been about a year now since I can like almost a year and a half and it's just grown like weeds. It's so crazy. And the upkeep on it too is uh, I should probably brush it more often. Um, <laughs> but I, I sham people always give me crap because I shampoo and condition all the time, like almost every day. Cause I like to feel clean and they're like, you're not supposed to condition your hair every day. And I'm like, but my hair looks luscious. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I can ask about Marie, but does Marie like the mullet? So mm, <laughs> Marie's a weird case because she's 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 gonna hate me for saying this, but she's uh obsessed with me to where she's like, I don't care what you do. She's like, I just love you. And I'm like <laughs> I'm like, oh, I appreciate that. I was like, but be honest with me. I was like, cause we're getting married pretty soon and uh I'm like, I'm gonna have this mullet. And she's like, I don't care. She's like, have the mullet. And I was like, all right, sick. I love that. That's how I know she's a trooper. Yeah, I think that just proves that she's really the one for you if she's okay with that and okay with you doing what works for you. And, you know, I think I would love to know, like, within your relationship with her, I know you guys have been together for a really long time, so she's probably been around wrestling for a really long time, even before you started your career, just being around you and your dad. But what's that like with all the traveling and all the things like that? Like, how do you how do you maintain that? Man, it's it's uh, it's honestly pretty hard doing uh I guess what we would call long distance because I'm in so many places and it's she was kind of prepared for it in a way because when I started training for for just to become a wrestler I moved to Tampa for six months and she was still in school so she couldn't come with me and then I came home for about a month and a half and then moved to Canada for three months to go train there and she was still in school and we kind of, honestly, we just kind of made it work somehow. Um, I think it's because we've been with each other for so long that like we we kind of in, we enjoy each other. So we like uh we we definitely did make it work. And then she had no idea about wrestling. She had no clue what was going on. And even when we were dating in high school, she like she never really came to the shows because at that time I wasn't really in like super invested in wrestling i had i was playing sports and still going to school and figuring life out and whatnot but closer to my senior year she traveled with us and i remember it was the first time she had gone to like a, a wwe event and it was in new york city and my dad was walking we were walking with him and this little girl just sees my dad and she absolutely loses her freaking mind and just starts bawling her eyes out and she looks at me and she goes is it always like this? And I'm like, no, but there's certain cases that it, you know, people are big fans. And I think that was her first time being open to this world of wrestling to where it's like, she didn't understand it. And now with me being in it, she's been to SummerSlam. She's been to WrestleMania. So now she's kind of in it a little bit more and her family's all into it. And they, they try and watch me every Monday night. They record it and they send me videos of it. So it's cool to see that, I have now gotten her whole family invested into it. Yeah. So you obviously grew up very close to the wrestling world. When was the first time that you really got 
I mean, you said you you probably got into it as a kid, maybe, and then fell out of it. And when you were busy in high school, and then maybe got back into it. But I know, like, you were pretty, you were involved at one point at a really young age. So what was that like? Yeah. So I think I, you know, even now I like to give people crap, and I'm like, I'm an 18 year veteran. I've been here since '05. <laughs> You know, even though I've only been wrestling for three years, I've been I've been here for a long time. But no, it's honestly uh, it's it's all been such a blessing, you know, because we've you know, I've been thrown into this business when I was eight years old, having a a storyline for my custody uh, with my dad and Eddie Guerrero. And then that a couple years later, I went on to do this thing where CM Punk saying happy birthday to Aaliyah in the ring. Um, and then just randomly showing up years later where I'm now taller than my dad. So I've progressively like just been on TV throughout e- these years. And even in high school, at, even I've, if I wasn't that involved when there was a show in San Diego, I'd always wanted to go and take my friends. Like we would always be there at the shows, no matter what was happening, football practice or whatnot, we'd be like, Hey, WWE is in town. We're going to go to the show. And I was already 15, 16 years old. So I was always super invested in it and like always had it in the back of my mind, but never really like my high school was very small. So it just offered basketball, soccer, football, just the very main generic sports. It didn't have like wrestling or anything out of the ordinary for us. So I never really tried it. And then once high school finished and I went to a JUCO and wasn't really getting into it I told my dad I was like hey I want to I want to give this a shot and he told me he's like if, as soon as you jump in the ring he's like I'll be the first one to let you know if you got it and or he's like or if I see something and I was like okay so I we went into the ring and started rolling and he never said anything to me so we just kind of kept going so how did it feel you know fast forward you got back into wrestling with your dad and then this past year main stage the granddaddy of them all as Derek would say you you fought fighting your dad like what was that like to get to experience that together as father and son oh it was you know it was a dream come true it was something that we had talked about for for years years coming in even before I I feel like I even started training um so having it actually happen at Wrestlemania 39 two hours away from our hometown of San Diego in Los Angeles. Um, It's just, it's so surreal. It feels like it was just yesterday, you know? Um, And it's just something that I will definitely hold in my heart very near and dear uh, because it's not every day you get to whoop your dad's ass. (laughs) Okay, well, he He did did win. He did win and he spanked you. (laughs) Yeah, but he cheated. We were there, Dom. He cheated. (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness okay well Derek I know you have some stuff that you want to talk to about Dom and what's currently going on with NXT and we do need to well, wrap up this conversation so let's get to that and, and well be- before that okay. um Risen I said um no judgment day is using you and name name it you they are <laughs> they are because Roman Reigns is doing that to Sami Zayn Using him, in eliminate him. I beat Sami Zayn. Got him. And same thing with Jimmy and Jay the Usos. They got straight as well. Okay, where are you going with this, bro? Get to the point. What I'm saying is, the Judgment Day will will attack you. All right. Well, uh, we you hope think the Judgment Day is going to crumble was, like the bloodline. That was a huge jump. I think that's what he's making the comparison. He's like, this is what happened to the bloodline. The bloodline crumbled. He thinks the same thing is going to happen to the Judgment Day. Is that what you're trying to say? What I, what, what I was trying to say, I, I, I saw Finn's eyes before. Uh, he's very furious with Damien Priest. I might agree with Finn right now because Damien is... Looking at Finn, 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 trying, trying to, to stop you. Rhea don't, don't let you to, to stop you. Tell me what's going on in No Judgment Day. What is going on? <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna let you know right now, Derek, why the Judgment Day 
is different than the bloodline and why they're not going to jump me and beat me up. So the bloodline is a real family. Jay, Jimmy, and Solo, those are three, those are real brothers. And then Roman is their real cousin. That's a real family that has real family issues, right? And not to mention, Roman, the head of the table, wants to be the head of the table. He wants to be the leader. He wants to be the one calling the shots. So now Jay challenged him to tribal combat, making him the one who wants to be the tribal chief and call the shots. So they're fighting for a leader, right? But the Judgment Day, we don't really have a leader. We can, we heard Triple H. We can argue that it's Rhea. We can argue that it's Finn or even Damien. He didn't say anything about me for some reason. <laughs> for whatever that reason was. But we don't have we don't have a particular leader. But what we are, Finn and Damon are currently fighting for is the top prize, right? But if you think about it, let's say Finn gets the World Heavyweight Championship, right? Then Damon has the money in the bank. He can still go for that top prize, which is what the belt that Roman has the undisputed. And we'd all be a big happy family because none of us are actually fighting to be who's on top we all understand and we're not actually a real family we picked each other as our family so that's what makes it even you know there's there's a saying because i say it now about Aaliyah. you can't pick your family but in this case ria damien and finn and myself we all picked each other so i think that's kind of why it works and we're not i i don't think they're ever gonna jump me because like i said we've gotten really close and the bloodline whole thing is imploding so we see that happening and that gives a judgment day a chance to be taken over (laughs) okay so you brought up Aaliyah I did want to ask I know that you're in the judgment day and you're in this dirty dom era but is there do you have any regrets for how you treated Aaliyah and Angie at WrestleMania? It was pretty disrespectful what went down with that whole thing. So I just want to know if on SmackDown too. Yeah, SmackDown and the whole retirement thing, like that just whole weekend, like you were you were kind of an asshole, Dom. So <laughs> what what do you have to say? Uh, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Because I knew what buttons to push on my dad in order to give me what I wanted. So I ended up doing that on Friday when I yelled at my mom in Vegas. But uh, do I regret it? I don't think so. You know, maybe maybe a little bit, but I don't know. I was uh, I was disciplined a lot as a child. <laughs> you were acting out. I, I get it. Well, speaking of that, you did mention Lee Mysterio. Let me ask you in 2020 when... When you and your family have some issues with Seth Rollins, Ray says something to Leah, which is she doesn't like that. Ray Mysterio just just said, and I quote, um, something must be the lies. She is naive and she doesn't know in the Mysterio's name or in the world. And Leah got offensive of that. Do you think we might see Leo Mysterio in the, the Judgment Day? Oof. That's a great question. Um, I don't know if I see Ali in the Judgment Day. I think first she would have to get Rhea's approval. Um, because Mommy Rhea is the only female currently in Judgment Day. Um, but I think th- I think that's I think that's a strong possibility. I actually like that, Derek. I he actually might take really it to like the family. That. Wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, we got to wrap this up, Derek. So, do you have any? Do you have a last question that you want to ask, Dom? Uh, well, just multiple questions about Leah. What's the most important question you need to ask Dom before we? We've asked a couple questions about Aaliyah, so why don't you just ask him about what he's got going on right now? This one is the last one. Um, So, Dominic, uh, um, do you think uh, you will talk to uh, Anna Pierce to make um, that WWE contract for Liam Mysterio and turn heel with with you guys? 
I think if Adam Pierce is gonna give Aaliyah a WWE contract, I think she has to prove herself. So I think she's gonna have to have a match. And it's gonna have to be against someone of the judgment day's choosing. And it's gonna have to be like the ma- the match that I had when I debuted, a street fight. Ooh, wow. Okay, so to wrap it up, wow. Dom, what do you what are you looking forward to in the next couple of months with what you've got coming up with WWE? Like what can we be excited about? I know you get held in the dark a lot, but but what can we expect? I think you guys can expect a whole bunch of craziness coming up because we have, like I said, the Judgment Days on the new Payback pay-per-view coming in September 2nd in Pittsburgh. Uh, And then right after that, we're going to India. And then after that, we're going to Germany as well. So we're just going to be all over the place. And I know the whole storyline with the bloodline is going to get crazy. The Judgment Day is going to get crazy because we're constantly taking over. Uh, Royal Rumble is coming around sooner than later and i know we're gonna be in st louis for raw in october i believe okay you told me that but i i don't see it on the calendar i know smackdown is coming to st louis in october but i didn't see raw on the calendar i saw i saw raw on there too i'll double check and i'll let you guys know yeah let me know because i saw smackdown's coming on october 6th but i looked up raw and as of right now i couldn't find anything but Interesting. Of course, if maybe you're there, they maybe they switched Raw and SmackDown. But either way, I'll I'll figure it out. And if you guys need anything for SmackDown as well, just let me know. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking with us. It was so much fun having you on. And I think this is great. I have the, the, the last thing oh, I, okay. I have to say. Let's um, get it. Dominic, do you think uh, what Ray, Ray said back in 2020 is kind of accurate right now? Do you think Lee Mysterio will, will might have a street fight against Rhea Ripley? Oh, at, wow. At I, would on Rhea. I hope for Aaliyah's sake it's not against Rhea. Um, because well, I don't think... I don't there's think, beef with Rhea. There's well, beef with Well, remember, we there's need Aaliyah to win to get Rhea this contract. And, Rhea. Hold on. And, if she, and if she fights Rhea, she's not going to win. Yeah, I thought you wanted Rhea, uh, Aaliyah to be able to get into the Judgment Day. How is she going to get into the Judgment Day if she's trying to pick a beef with Rhea? That's the last person I'd pick beef with. Oh, I would not pick Me beef too. with her. <laughs> but, but, do you think, um, I mean, most reading in life, like, I understand you're NXT North American champion, and and do you think, of course, Jay will might join the family? Now we're back to Jay. Corey, I, Jay, you know, I think. Oh, if I, like I said, I the doors will be open for Jay if he wants to come talk to us. I know he just lost his family. We're family with open arms. If you come to open arms with us, so I think if if Jay wants to uh to come in and talk to the Judgment Day, he's more than welcome to. I, I did not I meant Jay Uso. I meant Cora Jade. Cora Jade. Cora Jade. Oh, even more interesting. Again. When it comes to the females, Mommy Rhea is the one that has the last say because you got to get through her first. So I think when it comes to Cora, uh, yeah, Ma- Mommy's going to have to handle that one. See what Mommy says. Well, speaking of that, um, Cora Jade have issues with our the other friend we have, Dana Brooke. And do you think Rhea is going to help Cora Jade with Dana Brooke Plamela. I don't think Rhea is gonna help her. Uh and the reason I say that is because like like I said before, Rhea tried to help Lyra and Lyra just kinda threw it back in her face. So I don't know if Rhea is gonna go out of her way to help anyone outside of the judgment day. I think Corge is perfect though. He'll let her know. <laughs> I'll I'll talk to mommy, see what she thinks. We're we'll be at NXT next week, so We'll see what happens. Well, talk talk to Cora Jade. I, I mean, she's perfect. And okay. The, the last thing I'm gonna say, Rey Mysterio on NXT. He did talk to Rexy Perez and and Dean Hill. What do you think of, about when Ray talked to Rexy Perez and Dean Hill? I think. Do you want my honest answer? I think. 
I think Ray was being selfish because he was taking time from everyone else in NXT to make sure he put his face on there. That's why I do what I do. But, you know, I think it's cool for Roxanne Perez and, and you know, Thea to be able to talk to uh to my dad because I'm sure they grew up watching him. But they should be more excited for me because I'm their NXT North American champion. Boom. Well, speaking of that, you are going to defend your title for the NXT North American Championship. And your next opponent will be Muhammad Ali. You start stars him. Are you going to be cheering for Dom and Mustafa Ali? Dom. Who knows? <laughs> Come on, Derek. <laughs> what if? What if I? What if or I try Wesley. not to cheat? What if, he, what, if he, what if he doesn't cheat? Are you don't cheat? Okay. I'll you know try. What, I'll, we probably. I'll do my best not to. Yeah, we probably got to wrap this up with yeah, Dom. Gotta, How about a thank you? Can you say thank you and goodbye? He's got a plane to catch. Well, well, there's one more thing I'm going to say. <laughs> one, one more proposal about your defending your, your title against Muhammad Ali, and and if you beat him, how about you give a rematch to Wesley for your title? Oof. Uh. Well, after I beat Mustafa, I'll think about maybe giving Wesley another shot because I already beat him at the Great American Bash. And I, that's the second time I beat Wesley. So I don't know if I need to beat him a third time. But okay. we'll see. So I you have to lose that title, though. Okay, say thank you. All right. All right. Uh, one, one more last oh question. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have 100 more last questions. No, no, no. This has to be the last one, bro. He has got to catch a plane. And I want to say thank you. Well, this one is the, the last one right here before we sign off with our good friend Downing Mysterio. The last question I'm going to say is, why, why, why you want to beat Wesley for the NXT North American Championship? It's supposed to be the Intercontinental Championship, but not the NXT North American Championship. He wanted you to be the Intercontinental Champion. You know, I also want to be the Intercontinental Champion, but I don't want to get chopped by Gunther yet. Or I don't know if I ever want to get chopped by Gunther. I got chopped by him one time, actually two times at the Royal Rumble, and I said, no, sir, no, no, thank you. I will not be coming back here again. It was not fun. But I'll tell you what, if for whatever strange reason, somehow, some way, I end up losing this bad boy, I might have to come after the IC title. Well, well there you go. First. Okay, I'm- Mom, you wrap it up. Well, I, I'm sure you two have something to say, but Dom, you are such an amazing young man. And I just want to thank you for being so kind to Derek and our family. It means more to me than you can even imagine. So thank you for being such an amazing human. Oh, thank you guys. Honestly, I appreciate that. And yeah. this is it for Becker Spectrine. Let's hear, hear it for our special guest, NXT North American Champion, Dominic Mysterio. See you next time <laughs> thanks Baker, Baker's Baker. thanks Dom we appreciate you thank thanks, you guys Dom.